Top 10 strategy lessons from 18 years of practicing martial arts, part two. So let's get into it. All right. So the really important things that I'm going to cover are going to be in the top five, right? So last time we discussed part one, you'll have to watch the video if you're interested in what we talked about, but part two is going to be very important as well. Here it is up front, not going to make you wait for it. Never take it easy on your opponent, right? I've done a lot of sparring. I've done a lot of rolling. I've done a lot of martial arts in general, both cooperative, traditional, non-traditional, and in combat, non-cooperative. I've run the gamut. One thing that I've learned, especially from a lot of sparring, is you can never take it easy on your opponent. Don't consider his feelings or her feelings at all. Because if you're not giving them the fight of their life, then you're cheating them out of their sparring. You're cheating them out of their training. Now, there's a difference between smashing, going hard, and injuring your training partners. Obviously, we never want to injure our training partners. If you're that guy, well, then fuck you, honestly, and you'll get what's coming to you. But I don't think many of you guys and girls out there are. Most of the people who watch this channel actually are pretty good people from what I can tell. So really what this means is like, for me personally, I've gotten into trouble, right? Where, you know, and this is something we talked about in the first lesson in strategy, where you'll go into a role or you'll go into some sparring, whether it's Muay Thai, boxing, whatever it is, right? Even if it's CQC sparring, you'll go in, you don't really know the person and you maybe you say, I'll take a little light and then, you know, see where they are. They're a new person. And then bah, you get smashed, right? You maybe you get power doubled to the ground or whatever happens. So we can't let that happen. We have to go into each sparring session, each combat that it's a very well-trained opponent. We never, ever, ever want to underestimate our opponent at all. Now, even if, okay, they are a new person, right? Even if they're super brand new, super green, they've never fought before in their life. I've fought plenty of people, you know, in jujitsu and whatnot that, they don't know what the fuck is going on, but they're still strong. They're still, they're in there for a purpose, right? They're in there for a reason. Like guys who come to jujitsu aren't pussies in the first place when they step on the mat, right? So just smash. It, you know what I'm saying? Like, even if you're an upper belt, even if you're a, a blue belt, purple belt in jujitsu, or even if you've been doing Muay Thai for like years, right? Smash them. Who cares? Honestly, they'll learn. I mean, that's not to say injure them, right? I'm not saying like to go in and like if you're doing Muay Thai, right? Don't go in and then like fucking oh, right? Like don't don't hurt anybody. But if you don't practice going hard consecutively, right? Consistently, again, that's not necessarily saying to hurt anybody, but that's saying I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna jab my way in. And, you know, whatever, right? I'm going to do what I got to do. I'm going to treat these these people, this person, this opponent, as if they know what the fuck they're doing. And I'm going to lace them out, right? It doesn't necessarily mean that. There's a difference between going hard, right? And then, like, actually injuring somebody. You can go hard while you throw your punches and not connect them very hard, right? Like the way the ties train. You know, they go light, but they don't sacrifice technique for going light. And that will translate translate directly over into the street because, like, I've noticed one thing is that I've even gotten into the habit of, like, I'll have a nice light roll. I'll do a nice little bit of sparring. I'll mess around a little bit. I'll have fun. I'll play around. That's no good, man, because you're getting, you, you, get, you get hit or you get hurt doing that even more than if you just said, Mah! and you go and you, like, get them. And then when you do get on the street or in the battlefield and you need to really call upon that inner warrior, it's there, right? You, every time you engage, you engage. So never consider your opponent's feelings. I don't give a fuck how they feel. I give a fuck how I feel when I beat them or if I've done everything in my power consecutively and consistently to beat them. And if they're new, like if they're – all right, if you know they're new and they've like – for whatever reason they're sparring and they don't know what the fuck they're doing – um, you know, don't kill them, but give them, give them that opportunity to get beat by a very good or a very skilled fighter. And eventually they will learn that, you know, for whatever reason, they're rolling with you or they're, you know, sparring you fuck them. It doesn't matter how they feel about it. It matters how you feel. And you're going to feel good just rolling through them. I don't, 
it's just the way that it is. Uh, that's how I came up. I got, and I still get, you know, I still get steamrolled over quite a bit. But when I was a white belt in jiu-jitsu, and even when I first started sparring in Muay Thai, people didn't really take it easy on me. I mean, some of the upper belts and some of the guys and girls who have been doing Muay Thai a long time, you know, they caught on that I was new and they kind of like, but they didn't take it easy, right? I mean, they wouldn't like punch me in the jaw as hard as they could, but at the same time, they didn't let me win. Letting somebody win is never good. Now, when it comes to translating onto the street, okay, let's say we're at an altercation in a parking lot. Let's just use that example. Somebody's really acting up, and all of a sudden, you know in your mind, I've done everything I can. It's time to go at this. Boom, you crack him in the jaw as hard as you can. You move in, right? Give him a nice jab to the nose, crack him in the jaw, whatever it is, all right? Whatever the, the martial art of your choice is, or shit, I give him a nice jab, I work my way in, overhook you know, sweep, whatever, right? Take down who, you know, whatever. Um, You need to consistently practice going hard and going a hundred percent, at least in your technique. So that when you're on the street or Lord forbid in the battlefield and you need to call upon this, the movements come out concise and clean. And again, going like play fighting is never, it's never a good strategy in my personal opinion. There's a time and a place for it. Like when you're trying to teach somebody something or, Maybe you both are agree, let's flow roll for whatever reason, one party's injured or whatever. Like, okay, you know, there is a time and a place for that. But on the real, on the consistent, you need to consistently give it your all, even if you're going light. There's a difference between going light with great technique and then just fucking around for because you're lazy, honestly. Never consider your opponent's feelings. Now, when this translates over into a cage fight, a fight in the ring, a jujitsu competition, any of these sports examples that I can give, um, the fuck cares about how the other person feels? You're there to win. And same thing translates over onto a street fight. And by the way, a competition is pretty much the closest thing that we can come to a street fight because you're actually trying to hurt the other person. When you step into that ring or when you are on that street, you're trying to hurt them. You are trying to actively hurt them. You want, you want to have bad intentions. You know, you're not there to lose. You're there to win. Whether it's on the street or in the ring, you're there to fucking win. So act like it and try to hurt them. And we need to practice. A lot of us, me, I know, because I'm a try to be a good guy. I have like, um, I don't want to hurt people. I don't like hurting people. I really don't like it. Uh, but I need to practice being very aggressive on the regular so that if I need to call on that again, I have it there. And it's available instantly to me. Um, I don't have to think about it. I don't have to tell myself, well, now this is a street fight. Like, okay, now I have to hurt this person. I don't tell myself, oh, like now this is a, you know, I'm in a life and death struggle for a firearm after, uh, after I've rushed at this active shooter. Now I have to hurt this guy. I've, every time I, every time I turn that switch on, ah! I'm like trying to fucking kill somebody. Even if I'm in the back of my mind knowing, all right, we don't actively kill this person. Um, even if they're a fucking new white belt, honestly, these days, I try not to like play fight with them. I'm just, what? and I, you know, fuck them. Who cares? They're there for a reason. They're going to learn eventually not to do whatever they're doing. You know, unless it's somebody like there's one girl who's not allowed to come to the <laughs> advanced jujitsu anymore because she wouldn't spar anybody. She was all afraid when I would spar with her, like, you know, she weighs fucking probably a hundred pounds. I'm not going to like. And she's terrified. You see it in her eyes. She's like, ah, I'm not going to smash, right? I mean, maybe outside. Anyway, that's a different story. I'm not going to smash her up too bad. Um, but that's like, that's, there's a difference between having mercy on somebody who's clearly shouldn't be there. And then like, you know, a fucking 23 year old wrestler who was just like, fuck you, bro. Like I'm, I'm smashing you up. You're going to smash me up. Like we'll see who comes out alive at the end of that. That's the mentality that we need to have. So, you know, again, there's a time and a place for going light. I don't really think these days that there's ever a time and a place for play fighting unless you're like, you know, two examples I can give is one party's or both parties are injured or like you're trying to actively teach somebody and, you know, give them give them reactions and stuff to like let them win. That's different. When I train people, when I do my one-on-ones with my private clients and gutter fighting, that's what I do. I give them reactions. I let them get things. 
but I don't do that in sparring. I don't recommend you do either. I recommend that when you have to turn that switch on, you go full bore, even if you're controlling yourself to not injure your training partners. That's lesson number deuce. Number two, and the top 10 things that I've learned from strategy after 18 plus years now of doing and practicing various types of martial arts. I hope some of this helped. If you guys want to learn some serious street fighting battlefield technology, uh, go to gutterfightingsecrets.com. We've got an arsenal of informational videos. We've got some on ground fighting. We've got some on stand-up fighting and takedowns. We've got some on knife defense. We've even got uh, direct download videos on knife offense that's going to show you exactly how to use a knife, all right? And that's something not a lot of people teach out there. And we teach it the way that Fairburn used to teach it. So I want you guys to check that out if you're interested in learning. It's all direct downloads. Otherwise, you can check us out on Instagram at Good or Fighting Secrets. They, they freaking shadow ban us, so you got to search for it, but you'll find it. I hope, again, that each and every one of you takes these lessons to heart. And I pray you never have to use these skills, but if you ever do, flip the switch, turn it on, go through them, find the next guy, go through him and anything else in your way, destroy it. All right, guys, until next time, please remember that you were your first and last line of defense. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, mother flowers.